everyone welcome back to weather on the go all your weather coverage on this tuesday august 20th 2024 and in today's weather forecast we're going to be talking about an extended heat wave that continues to build across the southern united states but there are cool areas and we'll highlight those in today's weather forecast rounds of showers and thunderstorms as well we're going to be going over all of that and the tropical weather update at the end of the video so make sure to subscribe to the channel down below we're almost to 95,000 subscribers thanks to all the new subscribers out there all the older subscribers that have been with me for so long i definitely appreciate it so hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already make sure to press the like button the thumbs up button down below it goes a long way in helping out this video so i definitely appreciate it leave any comments questions and concerns below we'll certainly get to those later on today what you are looking at currently here on this tuesday is a uh, ghost satellite imagery across the United States and the adjacent Atlantic Ocean. And you can see quiet conditions across most of the contiguous United States, Southern Canada, and over here into the Western Atlantic Ocean. Let's dive into the forecast here for today. And we are seeing heat headlines that continue mainly for the Lone Star State of Texas, but there are also heat advisories in the orange up there into Southwestern Oklahoma, as well as Southeastern portions of Florida. In the magenta shade of color, mainly along and west of the I-35 corridor in Texas, just west of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, extending down toward the Houston Metroplex into portions there of Corpus Christi. We do have more of those excessive heat warnings to contend with with the extreme heat. Here's the culprit. We have a very strong ridge of high pressure that continues to build and dominate across the desert southwest and over here into Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Notice the dip, though, over here with the greens in the jet stream over in to southeastern Canada and the northeast U.S. This is a trough and this is actually bringing much cooler, more refreshing, lower humidity type of air mass across this region. So a tale of two cities here. We have the heat across portions of the south. We got the cooler fall-like air mass across the southeastern Canada and the northeast. Pick your poison here. Um, definitely into the 50s and 60s across the northeast this afternoon. Whereas we're in the triple digits again into Texas. 102 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. 107 in Abilene and 100 stretching from Amarillo down into Lubbock this afternoon and when you factor in the moisture in the environment this is what the feel like temperatures will be to the body as you walk outdoors 108 into the Wichita Falls region, 105 in Abilene, 110 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and 112 over into places like Tyler, Texas this afternoon. But look at the heat index is nothing to be existent here across the southeast Canada into northeast United States. Very much absent across that region because of such cool air. As we go through the week, though, as we go into Wednesday, August 21st, that ridge is going to continue to dominate. That trough is also going to continue to dominate in the very same areas and that will continue into Thursday although Thursday the ridge starts to build further east toward the Mississippi River Valley so we're going to start to see an uptick in our temperatures later this week into places like the Midwest the Ohio Valley and the southeast United States by Friday so let's look here at today this is your surface map and you can see the cold front is that is bringing all the refreshing lower humidity environment to the eastern United States is dipped all the way down into the northern Gulf Coast and off the coast of the east. So we're definitely seeing a nice brand of air over there. There's that warm front stationary boundary behind that very hot, very humid conditions this afternoon. Let's look here ahead to tomorrow morning on your Wednesday. Look at these low temperatures across the Great Lakes up into southeastern Canada and the northeast. We're going to be into the upper 40s, lower 50s to start off of over here and same thing in the Pacific Northwest. We're going to be seeing temperatures starting off into the 50s Wednesday morning. Here we go Wednesday afternoon. I mean, air in August cannot get much better than this, folks. In the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, the Northeast, Southeastern Canada, high temperatures Wednesday afternoon, tomorrow into the 60s and 70s, low humidity. Definitely get out and enjoy it. Whereas we need to hydrate across portions of Texas again, back into the Southern Rockies, the Four Corners region and the Desert Southwest where temperatures are going to be well into the 90s and triple digits. And then cooler again across the Pacific Northwest. We see that continue into Thursday. And then as we go into Friday afternoon, notice the heat tries to take a run more toward the east, toward the Mississippi River. So those 80s and 90s likely returning to parts of the Midwest into parts of the Southeast and Ohio Valley by then. 
Going back to yesterday, storm reports for your Monday, August 19th. We did see some hail, wind, and tornado reports. Tornadoes reported there into eastern Colorado yesterday. And we have more chances of severe weather going into this afternoon. We have a level 2 out of 5 slight risk of severe weather there in central and eastern Montana. Another marginal risk down here into southeast Colorado and northeastern portions of New Mexico and western Oklahoma panhandle. And going into the afternoon, isolated storm coverage all about some showers potentially across the Hawkeye state of Iowa up there into the Gopher state of Minnesota. Going into the evening hours, storms will be starting to develop, again, staying scattered across the Rockies this evening. And then as we lose the daytime heating after midnight and, and as the atmosphere stabilizes, we're going to lose the coverage and intensity of those storms going into early Wednesday morning. Going into Wednesday, slight risk of severe weather shifts a little bit further off to the east into eastern Montana and western North Dakota, marginal extending all the way down into Colorado and northwest Kansas. That shifts a little further east as we go into Thursday, including northwest Minnesota the Dakotas, Nebraska, all the way down into northwest Kansas again. And so far for Friday, the end of the week on August 23rd, there's not an outlooked area for severe weather. Would not be surprised to see another marginal or slight risk day as we have more confidence as we get closer here to this event. Looking here at the rainfall totals going through Friday, August 23rd through the rest of the work week. Heaviest of the rains will be over here in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle down into Portland region, averaging around a quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch here, and then maybe some rainfall around that same type of vicinity, a quarter of an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch here from the northern U.S. back there toward the Rockies. The heaviest of the rains in the U.S. will actually be in the sunshine state of Florida. Yeah, it's going to be a little unsettled down here, and we could be seeing rainfall amounts of one to two inches on average from Orlando down into Tampa Bay into the Daytona Beach area, Naples and Fort Myers, and maybe half an inch even down into the Miami area as well in Dade County. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Going into the weekend, we're going to see a trough across the western U.S. and a ridge out east here and this is definitely going to be leading to more heat building further to the east and more cooler air coming in across the west coast. And you can see, look at those temperatures. Those anomalies are going to be 26 degrees below average here across the west and 20 degrees above average across the east. So we're going to see a big flip-flop in our temperatures here from this week into the weekend. So Saturday afternoon, we're into the 90s across the middle of the country. Sunday afternoon, the heat, the 80s, 90s build all the way up into Canada. So areas that are cool this week into the 60s and 70s and morning lows in the 40s and 50s will actually be w warming up in a big way as we go into the weekend and we're going to be cooling off even more across the west as we go into the weekend so we'll be watching out for that with the clash of the air masses we got warmer air more moist unstable air further east we got more stable air cooler and drier further west when the clash of the air masses happen we have a pretty a pretty strong jet stream that is going to be coming in supporting the organization to these storms and we do have a lot of instability building. Here's your storm energy, your convective available potential energy on Saturday the 24th here this weekend. The Dakotas down into Nebraska and Iowa, we're going to be seeing values over 3,000 joules per kilogram, and we're going to see a low pressure system try to develop here in the northern Rockies all the way up into portions of Montana. Now, with that said, there's going to be a capping inversion on the atmosphere. Think of a pot of boiling water. When you have the lid on the pot of boiling water, the steam doesn't come out. But when you lift that lid, the steam comes out and the air wants to rise. The steam wants to rise, right? Well, we have a little bit of a capping inversion on the atmosphere on Saturday. So that could prevent storm coverage and intensity a little bit on Saturday. And then a lot of instability, over 5,000, 6,000 joules per kilogram up here into the northern U.S. on Sunday. That, again, could lead to severe weather. But again, the capping inversion is important. Will that break? That is very uncertain at this time as we are still several days away. But isolated severe storms could be possible with supercells and all modes of severe weather, too, with damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. So we'll keep an eye on that. In general, the European forecast model has been consistently showing a lack of a footprint of convection across portions of the northern United States, which actually means more isolated coverage of storms this weekend, not an overall outbreak of severe weather, but one or two of those storms could become supercellular with damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes, and even some heavier rainfall if they develop. More of the precipitation will be heavier across the international border into southern Canada like Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba as we go into the weekend. 
Now let's look here ahead at as we go into next week. We are going to be looking at this ridge extending all across the southern United States, more of that zonal flow in the jet stream, and that means a lot more of us are going to be above normal with our temperatures as we go into next week. You can see a lot of the U.S. 15 degrees above normal, and you can see going into early next week, we have that low pressure system from the weekend from Montana, slowly moving into southern Canada up into Manitoba. That could bring some isolated severe weather to the north northern U.S. early next week. That could get stronger, though. As we go into the middle of next week, a stronger low-pressure system will develop there. 993 millibars up there into eastern Manitoba with a cold front extending down into Minnesota and Iowa. That could provide a better chance for severe weather by the middle of the week with a more of a clash of the air masses there. And then a real strong low-pressure system here stronger than usual for August uh, down to 985 millibars there in Ontario could be bringing some heavy rain for Ontario and southeastern Canada over here into Quebec as well but extending a cold front down across the eastern U.S. and this could be a very potent cold front not only for severe weather and heavy rain but another in, uh, impressive cool air mass for August coming down from Canada into the U.S. behind this cold front as we go into later next week after all the heat we were just talking about so here's the precipitation anomalies for next week pretty much average with our precipitation leaning slightly above uh, above average out west and across southern Canada and leaning slightly below average with our precipitation further to the east across the Great Lakes the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic so we'll be watching out for that tropical update here for you we are looking at a very quiet Atlantic Ocean so far a lot of sinking air across this region not a lot of thunderstorm activity at all but our sea surface temperatures are warming with the lack of precipitation and this is actually making the environment more ripe for the hurricane season to come for late August, but especially September, October, and November. Look at the Gulf, folks. These are 30, 32 degrees Celsius sea surface temperatures. Those shelf waters off the coast of Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi are actually pretty much off the charts, folks. We're talking about like upper 80s with our water temperatures there in the shelf waters. So definitely seeing some very impressive water temperatures there for the hurricane season tropical depression probability going through the end of august through the 30th or 31st time frame that friday or saturday here to end the month of august pretty low chances unless we have a weak tropical wave that may come off africa toward the end of the month that's still here um, the jury is still out on that but looking at tropical storm probabilities pretty much non-existent across portions there of the atlantic ocean but things are going to be heating up as we go into early september we're going to see greater than a 60 percent probability of tropical storms, hurricanes, major hurricanes trying to develop there in the main development region as those stronger tropical waves survive off the coast of Africa, moving into the MDR and taking a run at either the Caribbean or the western portions of the Atlantic toward the Bahamas or even Bermuda again. So we'll be keeping an eye on that and we'll do that right here for you on this channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below so you have the latest weather information right at your fingertips, folks, and we'll be keeping you up to date on the weather all throughout the year. Make sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below. It goes a long way in helping out. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those later on today, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Tuesday out there.